Hello again, everybody, and thanks for checking in on our latest Panagraph Prep Preview video. I'm Assistant Sports Editor Joe Deacon, and alongside me is Sports Editor Randy Kindred. Hello, Randy. Hi, Joe. How you doing? Yo, doing well. Here yeah. we are. Yeah, week, we're here. Uh, week uh, 12, I guess. Yeah, week 12, and that means we're in the quarterfinals of the high school football playoffs, and we've got two teams. These teams we kind of thought would probably be here, and one of them's a bit of a surprise. The Central Catholic Saints are on a bit of a roll now after a 35-15 uh, win over Canton. Yeah, I mean, 4-4 uh, four and four late in the regular season, not even knowing if they were going to be in the playoffs, and they really they, they found some, some magic here, and uh, I, I covered their game against Canton last week, and uh, they, they took advantage of some Canton turnovers. Uh, you know, Canton really struggled with some turnovers, especially the first half. Saints took advantage of those and uh, and just uh, played played pretty solid themselves. And, and here they are. They've got a shot at the four-time uh, defending 4A champs now in Rochester. Yeah, they seem to have gotten their offense on track. I know they got shut out kind of in a little stretch here in the middle of the season, but the offense now seems to be putting up some points. Yeah, and they're, they're getting a good mix of uh, run and pass also. Uh, you know, uh, they still have some pretty effective runners with uh, Brett Segabiano and Ryan Zitkus, but uh, Jake Bachman is has done a solid job throwing the ball. And then last week, uh, Boffman gets dinged up for a play or two, and Grant Glowacki goes in and, and throws a touchdown pass himself. So, uh, so yeah, they've, they've got some mojo going, and I think they're, they're a confident bunch right now. Yeah, and as you said, the Saints will look to keep this going Saturday when they go down to Rochester and visit the Rockets. The Rockets are 9-2 and two after a 35-14 win over Quincy Notre Dame. Yeah, and they... Um, they traditionally have been a spread offense, and they still run the, the spread with uh, they're in the shotgun all the time. Uh, but in talking to Central Coach Mike Mays uh, uh, the other day, he, he said that they they're a little bit more balanced this year. They're not quite as pass heavy as they've been in the past. They're about 50-50 in terms of running the ball and throwing it. And so uh, I mean, the Saints are going to have to be able to defend both, and uh, it'll be a challenge. But uh, it, it's. Uh, Coach May said it's uh, they run a similar type attack to what Greenville did in the first round, uh, so probably just at a little better better level than Greenville. So uh, we'll see what happens. One thing I did notice about the uh, Rochester stats, they do have 24 takeaways on the season, and turnovers have been a bit of a bug for the Saints, so they'll need to protect the ball. Yeah, they've. Uh, uh, I think it was Central's had, in the four losses, they've had 19 turnovers. So so that really, when they turn it over, that, like with most teams, that that seems to be their undoing. And and even last week. Uh, they had four turnovers, but when Canton had eight, so uh, I mean, and most of Central's turnovers were in the second half after they had already built a, a pretty sizable lead. But uh, but still, that is something they're going to have to stay away from. Yeah, and the winner of that game will uh, advance to face either top-seeded Carterville or Heron in the 4A semifinals. But moving on to the team that's not so much of a surprise is our undefeated uh, Fieldcrest Knights. They got off to a uh, they got a thrilling finish actually to uh, Edge Moments and they did it with a couple of passing plays. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, talk about uh, having your backs to the wall. It was fourth and twenty-two and uh, kind of their last gasp and uh, they throw a hail mary type pass. Jackson Pitts grabs it out of the air, runs the end zone, and then they use a play for their two point conversion that they hadn't used all year. Uh, halfback pass. So. Uh, uh, that's kind of one of those magical playoff wins that sometimes you need along the way if you're going to make a long run. And uh, I think they've got a, a pretty good shot this week uh, against Clifton Central. Yeah, they, they're going to face a 10-1 and Clifton Central team that also rallied in the fourth quarter for a one-point win of its own last week. Uh, the third-seeded Comets won 19-18 over Hales Franciscan. Yeah, and they, uh, uh, just from what I've, I've heard about them, that Ben Toberman is a running back and linebacker for Clifton Central, and he's... He's really the key guy both sides of the ball. Um, I guess you can compare him to Grant Jokums for Fieldcrest, who plays the same positions, is very effective on both sides. But it sounds like uh, defensively, if Fieldcrest can find a way to slow Toberman down, they've got a really good shot to win the game. Yeah, actually, and we know Fieldcrest has, with Jokums, a big rushing attack, and also with Drew Barth. And uh, uh, Hales running back uh, Patrick Nelson ran for 164 against Clifton last week. Yeah, that, that should be encouraging a little bit for Fieldcrest, I think. And uh, in, in talking to Derek Schneeman, the coach at Fieldcrest, he, uh, he said that while Moments was more of a speed-oriented team, uh, Clifton Central reminds him of a lot of the, the teams in the heart of Illinois Conference, that physical team that uh, you know wants to play hard-nosed physical football and come right at you. And uh, so, and I think he thinks they, they match up pretty well in that regard. Yeah, and uh, the winner of this game is going to move on to the 2A quarterfinal, or semifinals, I should say, and they'll be facing either Eastland Pearl City or Rock Ridge. So... Yeah, in either way, it would be a, a real test. But you got to figure this time of year, no matter who you you advance to play, it's going to be going to be tough. But uh, I, 
I really do think Fieldcrest has a, a pretty good shot here. And, and talking to uh, Coach Schneeman and, Schneeman and the players, uh, I get the sense that they feel like they've got a really good shot as well. Yeah. Now remember, both of these games are going to be at 4 p.m. on Saturday. So check back here at Panagraph.com to follow our reporters uh, or follow our reporters' tweets for live scores. And then uh, be sure to pick up your Sunday morning Panagraph or come back to the website for our reports on the games. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.